be all on my line about nothing. I want to go get you a dollar or something. Dollar or something. You need a dollar or something. Recording live in the Conscious Creative Media Studios from somewhere in the middle of nowhere, North Carolina, you are listening to the world's greatest photography podcast with your host, Bill Howard. Thank you, Scott, and welcome to the world's greatest photography podcast. I am your host, Bill Howard. And we can be heard on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Spreaker, and you can see us on YouTube at Conscious Creative Media. That's creative with a C-R-E-8-I-V-E. And once again, we're going to have a great guest today. Uh, we're going to discuss sports photography and more importantly, sports photography regarding your portfolio. Uh, our guest today is the former director of photography for Athlon Sports, part of AMG and Parade. He currently has the magazine NNO, which you can find at nnomedia.com. Mr. Harrison McClary. How are you doing today, Harrison? Doing well, Bill. How are you doing? Thank you. Uh, I'm doing great. We just got this hurricane that is coming in, and uh, so we might periodically hear a little bit of thunderburst. What we're looking for today, again, is we want to get inside the mind of somebody that's a director of photography and editor of what they're looking for out of prospective photographers for a publication or an agency. And before we get into that, we're going to start off the first segment that's called Spray and Pray. Now, my first question to you, when you shoot, because you're a fine photographer yourself, do you use single shot, short burst, or spray and pray? Short burst. Short burst. That seems to be the way it needs to be uh, from the people I've talked with. That's what I use myself. Today, we're going to do it a little bit different. Like I said, this is the Spray and Pray, and this is where we ask questions and our guests give answers in hopes of finding something to talk about, because although this is the world's greatest photography podcast, I am not necessarily the world's greatest podcast host. So you ready to do this, Harrison? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> All righty. First question, DSLR or mirrorless? Uh, mirrorless for everything except sports. It... Now, is, do you find that the mirrorless just can't keep up with the action? or? Well, I use Nikon, so the D5 is just an extension of my eye when I'm shooting sports. It never fails me. The mirrorless is just slow enough that I miss things. I've tried using the Z6 and the Z7, and Sony sent me a system once, and I just don't like it for sports. Canon, Nikon, or Sony, is there any reason you stayed with Nikon rather than, say, going to Sony's mirrorless? Well, Sony just felt like a toy in my hand. Um, you know, they're I'm sure it's a fine system, but I just literally, I used it half of a football game and literally got zero usable photos, which for me is not very good. <laughs> um, it's, uh, and Nikon, I started out using Nikon. I switched to Canon for a long time and switched back when I went to Athlon and just was glad I did. It was like coming back home. I love the way Nikon's feel in my hand. And that's what I found too. I, when I used the Sony A9, I, I used it for a golf tournament, and it just it wasn't comfortable for me. It didn't feel right. Um, well, I know for me, I kept hitting the record video button when I was trying to use back button autofocus, and that's a little annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as going further into the cameras, do you stay brand specific on your lenses, or are you susceptible to say Tamron or Sigma? No, I stick with uh, the name brand lenses I have for a long time. Every time I've tried to use what I call an off-brand lens, they just don't work quite right. I mean, I'm not saying there's something wrong with using them, but they just generally, sometimes there's a software issue, sometimes there's a firmware issue or whatever, and it might not work with something that's newer or whatever. And I've had issues with trying to use off-brand lenses, so I just stick with the manufacturer's made lenses. Now, do you mainly shoot with primes or telephoto? Well, telephotos are primes. <laughs> I use well, uh, I well, usually use primes. Zoom, right? zoom lenses. I'm sorry. I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> you know, us photographers, we got to pick on each other. Um, <laughs> yeah, I usually use a combination of both. You know, for um, for my long glass, I use a 400 2.8, and then I have the 80 to 400 
Nikon zoom that I use on day games is my short lens. And then I'll use the 80 to the 70 to 200 2 8 when it's a night game or a darker game where I need the higher aperture. You are listening to the world's greatest photography podcast with your host, Bill Howard. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Conscious Creative Media. Uh, and you can follow Harrison at, let me find it here, I'm sorry, at NNO Media LLC for his magazine or Harrison personally at W-H-M-M-C-C-L-A-R-Y. That's W-H McClary. And Harrison, Windows or Mac? Windows. Any certain reason? Uh, I used to use Mac, and I just got fed up with the way they changed everything continuously. You go from SCSI, then that went away, and then you go to FireWire. They got rid of FireWire, and you're stuck with peripherals that don't work. And then... They go to some weird other connector that, you know, is just like, okay, whatever. And so I finally built my own Windows computer, and I put a FireWire 800 port in it so I can actually use my old Nikon scanner, which I could not use on my Mac any longer. Right. Do you find um, one system over the other as far as speed or...? Well, that's what I was just about to get into was I noticed um, towards the end of my time at Athlon, the... Newer versions of Mac seem to take forever to download photos to an external drive because for some reason it would decide, oh, I need to index this entire drive while you download photos to it. And I would go up at halftime to dump my cards and it would still be sitting there downloading when halftime's even over. And I could not understand that. On my Windows computer, it just downloads them instantly. And it's just, I mean, I would have to go through and turn off all these settings and everything, and it just got frustrating. People say Mac is the easier system, but towards the end there, I just feel like Mac was abandoning people, professionals, for gimmicky stuff for people who really don't know how to use computers. I mean, to say because you use Mac, you don't know how to use a computer is obviously a lie because photographers have to understand computers, but... I just got frustrated with them, and I was kind of forced to use a Windows computer because Reuters had pr proprietary software for a while. And once I started using Windows, I realized there's really very little difference in the two, and I I just switched over. Now, on Photo Mechanic, do you use the new version, or did you ever update? Okay. Yes. Do you find any difference in the update over the old one? Um, I think they finally have the new version up where it's running well and everything seems to be working just fine. I really don't see any major differences in them other than some of the keyboard shortcuts changed, and I had to reteach myself how to do things, but that's okay. about it. Well, since we were talking about photo mechanic, let's go into the, the true editing stuff, Adobe or DaVinci. Don't even know what DaVinci is, so I guess Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a free version. Uh, there, there's free versions of DaVinci for both video and uh and regular editing uh, okay. uh, for stills. But all right, so on Adobe, Lightroom or Photoshop? Photoshop, I use um, Capture One for my main tweaking of photos. Okay. Now, do you do your crops on Photo Mechanic, but do your other editing on Photoshop, or do you do yes. basically everything on Photoshop? Well, I pull um, the way my workflow goes, I ingest the photos using. Photo Mechanic, apply captions to it that way, go through, make my selects, pull them into Capture One, do whatever tweaking needs to be done. And Capture One will tweak JPEGs just like it will RAWs, so it doesn't really matter if I shot JPEG or RAW. And I will, you know, I have actually created actions programmed that just pretty much do everything I need to do because most of my photos are pretty much exactly the same when I shoot them. They just need a simple little tweak to make them look like I want them to look. So I can do that. Then I export them out of Capture One, pull them back into Photo Mechanic. I will crop them and upload them for where I'm going. And if I need to crop them again, I can just crop them quickly in Photo Mechanic and send them again with the correct crop without having to have three different versions of the photo on my hard drive because I had to crop them in Capture One and save them. In Photoshop, I use basically to convert to CMYK when I'm printing in the magazine. That's about it. This is the end of segment one. And if you're watching on YouTube, the second segment will air on Wednesday and the third segment on Friday. If you're listening to the podcast, stay tuned right after this break as we talk to Harrison about how to approach a director of photography or an editor to get on with an agency or a periodical. And 
You're listening to Harrison McClary on the World's Greatest Photography Podcast. We'll see you in just a second. Why you be all on my line about nothing? Why won't you go get you a dollar or something? Dollar or something? Get you a dollar or something? Something? Why you be all on my line about nothing? Why won't you go get you a dollar or something? Dollar or something? Get you a dollar or something? Something? Why you be all on my line about nothing? Why won't you go get you a dollar or something? 